Let's move on to number two. This is making sense of that place name boundary civil profile. So I think that once we understand this, we'll be able to troubleshoot whenever you get that boundaries are not fitting within the given parameters message. Um, once we understand this, we'll be able to troubleshoot that. So I'm going to go through and explain how some of those are calculated. So in these slides, I have a screenshot of a profile sheet model. And then this is a screenshot of the place civil profile. And so the first one I want to explain is the length. So within the sheet model, if you measure the port length or the length of the name boundary, right here, it's a 2.33. The sheet model is always at a scale of one to one. And so when you select this, it'll auto-populate the detail scale from the DGN lib. In this example, it's one inch equals 50 feet. And so it's simple math to figure out what the maximum length that will fit within the sheet would be. Just 2.33 times 50 times 12 is going to give you 1,400 feet. So you know that you want 1,400 or less of your profile for your name boundary when you're creating them so that it'll fit within your sheet model. If it's anything beyond that, it'll extend beyond the extents of the sheet. So that's the length. Next is the available profile height. This is going to be calculated very similarly. The only addition is that we have that vertical exaggeration piece that you can select as well right here. In this example, the vertical exaggeration is set to five. So I measured the port height right here, which is 1.33 feet and my detail scale, one inch equals 50 feet. So I do very similar math. I just need to divide it by the vertical exaggeration and that gives me 160 feet. And so I know I have 160 feet of available profile range that my profile can vary within that name boundary. And so for the top clearance, this next one down here boxed in green, if you have this checked, this is typically used so that if you say you have a curve in your profile, it allows for annotation up here. And the simple math on that is you're just right here, it's 0.5, the vertical exaggeration. You multiply the two of those, which in this example will give us two and a half. And if you subtract that from the available profile height, we have 157 and a half feet of available profile height. That way we can still have room for some annotation up at the top so it doesn't go outside of the bounds of that. And the same is going to be true for the bottom clearance. Users like to use the bottom clearance for any frame annotation. You're typically going to have a larger bottom clearance so that your frame annotation can fit there. And so if you have both top and bottom clearance, your available profile height of what you have is going to be less. So in this example, you're still multiplying that two by the vertical exaggeration, which is 10. So we have 147.5 feet of available profile height in this example. And then the splain are these profile shifts. So this is going to be these last three items right here. So within the profile shifts, there's different options. You can shift at datum stations, and that's going to read these two right here. So along the horizontal, it'll be every 100 feet along your stationing or every five feet vertically. You can do where needed, and it'll just calculate. It'll shift wherever it's needed at profile points, or you can have it not shift at all. So you don't want it to shift at all. And so in this example, I put two screenshots on top of each other. Right here is a profile where it didn't need to shift at all because this profile stayed within that available profile, that 160 feet of available profile height. Here I created a pretty crazy profile just to force and show a significant profile shift that needed to occur. The elevation change was greater than that 160, so it had to shift. And I had it at the datum stations, so it shifted at an even 100-foot station. And yeah, so that's an example of that. The whole conduits only, if you have this checked, it gives you the ability to only draw whole conduits on the profile sheets and it'll force any other ones to be drawn on the next profile sheets.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.